Welcome to Rugby and District Astronomical Society's guide to using the plough to find your way to other celestial objects. Here we have a typical nighttime image, the plough uh, shown as it normally is depicted with the seven stars forming the shape shown here. Of course the plough rotates around Polaris so it can be um, high or low towards or away from the horizon upside down as shown from here or with the tail pointing up or down as well but once you get familiar with the night sky you'll easily be able to pick out the plough whichever orientation it's in. The plough of course forms part of Ursa Major it's actually an asterism which is a shape formed by stars which is not uh, a constellation and may not even be part of the same constellation the most famous example of this is probably the Summer Triangle, formed by the stars Vega, Deneb and Altair, which lie in three separate constellations. The constellation of Ursa Major may also be depicted slightly differently, with a bit more of a bear's head like this, and there are other uh, depictions available. So we're going to be starting off at the right hand side of the body of the plough itself, and using the most famous uh, signpost, of the pointers to find our way to Polaris. The easiest ones to remember are all alliterative. Here we have a P and a P for the pointers towards Polaris. And here we have an image of Polaris itself taken with a nine and a quarter inch scope. And you can clearly see that it's a double star. The brighter one does outshine its fainter companion and it's uh, quite difficult to split in smaller instruments. Polaris is important because it was used by navigators to find out how far north or south they were in the northern hemisphere. The reason being that Polaris lies around 630 light years, almost directly above our north pole. It won't always be the pole star because the Earth's axis does have a bit of a wobble and at the moment it's a happy coincidence that the pole is pointing more or less at a fairly bright star so it's easy to find. In the southern hemisphere there isn't a southern pole star. So if we draw a line directly towards Polaris from the north pole and have a look where our horizon would be, you can see Polaris is 90 degrees away from the horizon which gives us the latitude of the north pole of 90 degrees. If alternatively we were on the equator the angle between the horizon and the pole star would be zero. Polaris would lie on the horizon. You wouldn't actually be able to see it in this circumstance because the extra thickness of the atmosphere that you're looking through, remember as you look towards the horizon you've got, you're looking at an angle through the atmosphere not straight up through it as you would if you were at the North Pole or looking at a star at the zenith which is directly over your head. So this would give us a latitude at the equator of zero degrees. Anywhere in between, your latitude is found by looking at the angle of the North Star compared to the horizon. So looking at this angle here, from Rugby, this would be at around about 52 degrees, and that's 52 degrees North Latitude. So Polaris tells you, and more importantly Mariners, how far North or South they are. The longitude problem took a little bit longer to solve. So looking at the plough again, the second uh, of the easy to remember guides is following the arc down towards Arcturus the brightest star in the constellation Bootes which is a sort of kite shape which is laying on its side when looked at in the early months of the spring up to April May time and uh, is fairly visible from spring onwards now we use the rear legs of the Great Bear to go down towards Leo. So I've had the pointers towards Polaris, the arc towards Arcturus and the final alliterative one is the leg towards Leo. And these do point towards the sickle which forms the head of Leo. Well and this is a well known asterism again and this is an example, of, another example of one where it lies within the constellation completely. So here's the rest of the lion and we'll have a look at the star Regulus here and also in this area we have the Leo triplet of galaxies. Regulus is shown here with its faint companion off to the right. It's another double star 
um, uh, one that's quite easy to catch in a four inch telescope as I did here harder to catch in a four inch telescope and ideally a photographic subject is the Leo triplet this was taken with a nine and a quarter inch scope and a device called a focal reducer it works a bit like a Barlow lens in reverse instead of zooming in it turns the instrument into more of a wide angle and we have the three galaxies here M65, M66 both Messier objects that he found and catalogued and the edge on galaxy NGC 3628 and they make a nice uh, grouping of galaxies um, again not easy to find in anything under six inches uh, and in six inch instruments they will just be uh, the typical Messier faint fuzzy blob rather than defined as they are here which is a stack of ten individual 30 second exposures back at the plough again and easy galaxies to find and observe with small instruments or even binoculars if you go across this diagonal here heading from the lower of the leg stars through the upper of the pointer stars and about one to one and a half times the distance across the diagonal of the body of the plough we come to Messier 81 and 82 a pair of galaxies these can be caught quite easily in the same view in a four inch telescope higher magnifications you'll need to move the scope to find both of them you probably won't get them both in the same view so we have M81 here off to the right and M82 off to the left they are different M81 is a fairly face on spiral and M82 is edge on here we have M81 you can see the nucleus and some of the outlying parts of the spiral galaxy and here we have M82 this was taken with a 4 inch telescope with a DSLR attached a single frame and you can see that it's clearly edge on and it was thought to be an irregular galaxy until recently when the spiral structure was actually discovered um, using instruments such as the Hubble Space Telescope and large telescopes to have a look at this galaxy back to the plough again and going the opposite way along the diagonal we come to Corcaroli a double star in Canes Vetanisi, the hunting dogs and here we have it this was taken again with a 4 inch telescope but with a 2 times Barlow lens to make the splitting of the star easier to see Corcaroli is the last named star with an officially recognised name named by Sir Edmund Halley and I'd say he's allowed to name a star Corcaroli is the heart of Charles and it's named after Charles II back again to the plough we're going to use the top two stars here now to go along to the bright star Capella in the constellation of Auriga and moving down on this diagonal you don't quite get to the stars you're looking for but if you head down this way you will see just the two bright stars of Castor and Pollux in Gemini Castor is well worth a look because it's a close double star um, you need a fairly good magnification to actually split the two stars and that's it hopefully you'll be able to use our guide to find your way around the night sky using Ursa Mate and we'll be posting more of these signpost type guides in the future